There are two items in any endgame Minecraft world that players are constantly running out of. First up, we have food. And second, we have firework rockets. Thankfully, I have food sorted pretty well. Rockets, uh, not so much. Sure, yes, I do have a sugarcane farm in this world. And I have a gas farm for gunpowder that unfortunately broke with the last update. So let's put them together in a massive farm to automatically produce rockets. Far to the east in this world, it's time to establish the keep in my new dwarven city, filling the inside with our rocket factory to hopefully finally solve one of the biggest problems I have in this world. So click that like button if you're excited and please subscribe if you haven't already. I actually designed the keep a few months ago in another creative video here on my channel. So I have a pretty good idea of what I need to do today to get started. Oh no, my crops. Oh, I didn't even realize. That's why, that's why I just keep moving. Oh no, the horse. <laughs> it's all going wrong. Yep, yep, I know what I need to do. And well, that's going to be a decent amount of digging here to get ourselves started. And that will do the trick. Hopefully that's enough boxes to at least clear the space. Today's dig isn't too massive as we are mostly going to be covering the area, but I do want a throne room on the inside, so I need to at least level a corner of this mountain space for that interior to sit in. I did decide to leave the corners up a little bit higher on the mountain. One, to save myself some materials, and two, I feel like the natural curve coming down instead of it just being carved out is gonna look a lot better in the end. And it'll help speed up the build process a touch. Now our floor level for the throne room should be sitting right above this, where for now we can at least throw down a few torches to keep the inside a little bit safer when we are building everything up above. Because when I was looking in the creative copy of this thing, the entire inside was, well, full of creepers. And I want creepers on the inside, just not here. They're supposed to be like floating up above there in a little creeper farm, not down here in the throne room. That's gonna be all I'm gonna need the beacon for today so it can clean it up now. I need to reclaim a few shulker boxes in order to fill up with more stuff today. So let's pick up a few of these here. As I've realized something that I want to eventually include in the Dwarven City a little further down the road. I'm not too sure how quickly I can clear out these boxes, but I've got an idea. Down in here in the original Dwarven Village, we have stonemasons who will trade stone for emeralds. Seeing as my emerald farm is currently broken, and well, I have a lot of stone that I don't need, uh, we can get a few emeralds this way. Okay, I'm thinking it might be worth it to zombie cure them when we set up a permanent villager trading hall for stone trading. As getting a little bit more than, say, uh, 20, well, 16 emeralds for uh, seven stacks of stone would be, uh, they'd be kind of nice. 20 stone for one emerald is, uh, it's easy to get, but it goes through these inventories very quickly. Well, came away with one and a half stacks of blocks of emeralds just about in there, and all of these shulkers, all nine of them are completely empty. So that's not the best rate, but at least the boxes are clear. I am curious how cheap you could make that trade though, because that could be very, very nice. But I guess you can't stack zombie curing anymore. Did that get changed? Did that get changed? Can somebody let me know? Can I still do that? Can I still get super cheap tades? or did that, that get fixed? I kind of like that bug. Now these boxes are going to be a huge pain to refill as I need a lot of gray tone blocks and apparently I decided that I need three shulker boxes full of tough blocks and two shulker boxes of deep slate. A little mad at past whip right now. So it's time to head on down into the mines and spend a few hours here. Starting off, I went into a side cave that I knew had a few blobs of tough that I could still mine out. Unfortunately, they were not in range of my beacon, so mining took a little bit longer, but I think I saved overall time instead of setting up a new beacon and digging a brand new column for it. You know what would be really cool in Minecraft from somebody who's been digging for 45 minutes now? Haste potions. Half of the beacon effects are already obtainable either from some food source or some other type of potion. If you think absorption comes from enchanted golden apples and a lot of the other stuff comes from like regen from a potion already. I think you can get strength. I think you can get jump boost with a rabbit's foot. All that stuff, it's already available. So why not make the other half of the beacon effects available from a potion for a limited time? That way, if you're not near a beacon, you could just pop that and have eight minutes of haste too to be able to quickly mine out a region. That would be absolutely amazing. Or 
or honestly my preferred part of it would be if you have that and a beacon with haste too you can maybe instant mine deep slate huh huh i think that'd be pretty cool sign somebody who has multiple hours of mining that they don't want to be doing right now and uh, i have i have a lot of digging left we're a sugar box and a half full here we got one full and we're almost halfway through the second and i'm halfway done with the duck not even started on the deep slate at least with the deep slate i will have a beacon buff even though it's still slower i've cleared all the tough on this half and regardless of the zombies there uh we've got a little bit more of an issue over here towards the next tough that i need to be able to clear out can we just stop hitting i need to get through all of these creepers oh there's some right there okay maybe we light it up i've got six torches and i've got a dream that we will have three shulker boxes of tough very quickly i was gonna say that was gonna be safe enough but zombies literally just respawned right behind me all right this is this is proven to be a little annoying clear one side and they come back on the other oh well time to dig again i'll just deal with it as they come in second shulker box is full and on to the final one hopefully i'm not honestly not even sure i'm a little worried it's not gonna be enough at this point i need another half stack here and the third shulker box is full and i thought this was a little tiny one here right into the wall and it's expanding oh i'm falling but anyways there's the third shulker box full and this thing is just expanding into the wall and since i'm here and i'm assuming i might need some more uh, i'm just gonna clear out all this too just to get the bonus tough well that ended up filling up my entire inventory here of tough blocks so uh we're gonna call that as enough for now and uh time to head on out of here and since my inventory is full we're just gonna head back up and drop all of this stuff off in the main storage and then head right back down here looks like we already got a few stacks in here so that's gonna be a good bonus and we'll just throw the three shulkers in there for now back to mining round two found some diamonds on the first blocks broken as a good omen for the mining session before i burned myself in some lava that fell down from the ceiling um yeah that happened twice uh yeah oops um yeah moving on and then a fairly normal deep slate mining session for about 40 minutes to finish filling up both of the boxes to where i found some bonus tough blocks in the ceiling ah instant mining tough one of the best things you could be doing uh yes i'm getting these as much as i have space available okay this blob was a little bit bigger than i was expecting good problem to have but i definitely do not have space to take it all home with me wait actually this one I didn't fill it all up because I realized I didn't need the second shulker. So that, <laughs> I have more space. Well, there are four or 500 bonus tough in here for ourselves too. And that's a very successful mining mission. I have almost extended all the way around to the beacon here. So we do need to start going up. I'm trying to think of the best way to do that. Currently, my brain says jump up here, mine out these next three blocks like this going across that entire level and then once i'm done with that start the next level and then we mine out this base one here that way we can basically create a giant empty chamber that's just gonna slowly climb up of all of the deep slate that we're mining and i think it could look kind of funny before we get into crafting all the tough and deep slate down i want to make a quick stop down here into the la silverfish farm that's what we're calling it yeah 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 as i have a few tools that definitely need to re be repaired and we have a lot more stuff to be gathering see we do a little flippy there nope we do a flippy there that's what it is okay one moment please all righty all of the tools are now repaired and we can keep moving forward where just to check the items fully off the list i think i'm gonna craft down all of our deep slate and all of the tough just to get it over with I think I'm gonna need an extra box or two though. Thankfully, between these two base materials, we have a bulk of the building materials needed to create the keep as I wanted the dark gray tones to really come through. And oh wow, did I use a ton of these and I'm now realizing the dangers of creative planning when it comes to sanity. As these four shulker boxes here are all of the different tough materials we need. And then these right here are for the deep slate materials. And I grabbed three more boxes as I wanna see if I could get everything else in side of them but i'm not too sure as i do need a lot of terracotta and yeah, i got a stack in 17. okay we're headed out to the mesa after that i do the rest of this right stayed up through the entire night to see another sunrise in this minecraft world crafting everything for all of the stones which i now have with those right in here and i need to come in here as well 
Actually, I need a second block of that. Apparently, I decided that I want to get four lodestones into the build and also use a block of netherite to decorate with. You can really tell that I planned this in creative and didn't really think it through, but yep, those are going into the shulker mess, which we've added another two shulker boxes to. This one's still empty, but I think it's about time to take that out and fill terracotta. We're already up to eight boxes here. Uh, I'm a little worried about how big this is gonna get. Here we are out in the beautiful untouched mesa, and it is time to destroy. Thankfully, mesas are pretty easy to mine in. As with efficiency five and just haste one off of a beacon, we're able to get instant mine. Now, the range off this tiny beacon isn't the most insane, so I'm just gonna kind of hope that it's enough. As I've got to fill up this entire shulker box here full of terracotta. Oh, it's colored underneath. No! Really need to install that data pack that just lets you dye all the different types of terracotta. I'm gonna have to move the beacon. I got, I can't, I can't live like this. Oh, but I guess right down here, I got two layers of it. All right, here we go. Wow, this goes so far back. That's just, when am I gonna hit the stone? Oh, this is amazing. That's uh, a big old space cleared out underneath here and should be a little over a shulker of terracotta. Perfect. We can make a quick stop right in here for the sniffer farm, grab ourselves some pitcher pods and harvest up a little bit of the field. As I don't think I've done this before, but you can turn these directly into cyan dye, which we can use for cyan terracotta. That right there should be plenty of cyan dye since it duplicates. This here is going to do it for all the cyan terracotta. And yeah, we've got plenty of extra dye, so we could throw that into here. Next up, I need some light gray dye, but I believe... Ooh, we've actually got some in here. No, that's that's light gray. And I'm going to need a little extra, as we need a lot of light gray terracotta here too. Yeah, I'm going to need to restock that soon. I still have uh, about two out of three shulker boxes worth of stuff to gather up. And unfortunately, I'm out of boxes. I think there's, yeah, there's an empty right in here. And okay, I guess I could, yeah, maybe there's two, but I'm a little shy. Oh, no, there's three. Okay, well, anyways, I have a side quest that I want to do. And we're going to do that because it sounds like fun right now. Let's take a bunch of shulkers of dirt here. And that should be enough. As to clear out some space and create room to pick up even more blocks, I want to revisit visit a project that I started quite a while ago that I still definitely want to continue on of the custom landscape. So I've got a bunch of dirt and I've got a landscape that needs a bunch of dirt placed down. Oh, wow. I've got a, I've got, oh, I've got a lot of dirt over here already. I've got a lot of shulker boxes here, moss and stone and dirt and uh, so much dirt. These are all full of dirt. All right, let's place blocks. One stream on the clock. My goal is to fill in all of the open spaces between the spiderweb scaffolding that I had created a while back for the rough shapes here as a way to easily clear out some shulkers while still putting all of the stuff to use. Taking the time to bring the dirt up to the existing stone faces and just kind of stopping there for now. After that, I jumped over to the mountain river and started stacking up dirt along the edge to help create almost like a small valley feel as if the erosion has slowly worked through the terrain over time where our rivers are running, where we have managed to clear out seven full shulker boxes of dirt. Still a lot of work left to be done up here, but this is looking really good, and I'm happy with the progress for a little over two hours of work. Everything up there that's still dirt, and honestly kind of coming down through to here and over, is what we have managed to change, and I've still got these two spaces to fill in, but I think I've got enough clear space. Just gotta eventually bring it all the way over to that mountain too and deal with the schnurr. Now back to focusing on the keep for the final materials as I want it to look almost like gilded, I guess. And while I'd love to use gold for that, uh, one, it only really comes in full blocks and there's only two of them. So copper is gonna have to work here instead with a bunch of our waxed copper, which I think I actually have some. Yeah, I got plenty. Nearly two shulker boxes full of different types of copper, some foliage stuff, and a few pieces of glass to be able to help with our shading as we're going. And we need to make a quick trip back down into the villager trading hall to benefit from what we were doing earlier. As the first sets of shulker boxes that I cleared out in here, we generated a ton of emeralds by selling stone. 
now I need to use those emeralds I generated to buy a ton of dripstone in return and actually repair my elytra a touch and that should do it I hope and there we go many many hours and actually a day and a half IRL later we finally have all of the materials we're gonna need in order to build the exterior of the dwarven keep I haven't even thought about the farm on the inside yet so we'll deal with that when we get there and by uh, me saying I have everything that I absolutely need for the keep I completely forgot that I need frog lights to create fake window light yep mm hmm because who's gonna do the whole interior it's gonna have a farm on the inside so obviously that means I need these not that many of these these okay now we have everything we need i've got everything set up here at the project site for building up the dwarven keep which means it's time to build the exterior now i already have done a video talking about how i built this entire thing and how i designed the entire thing and i'm basically just going through those steps here again so definitely check out the other video if you'd like to see the entire design process but for this one we're gonna speed through building this thing up For a solid foundation, we're using the dark deep slate bricks here to build on top of. And I want to tackle one of the base corner structures for this first before we duplicate it all the way around. Next, I need to build up my go kit. So we're going to take a stack of frog lights, some dripstone blocks, copper trap doors, probably some glass to work with, and honestly, a stack of most of the different blocks that I'm working with here. I'm definitely missing a few things, I think, but that's as much stuff as I can hold. So let's get started and see how far it takes us. It's been almost two months since I designed this originally, so I'm really relearning what I did when working through these designs again to try and recreate it here in the main hardcore world. And my brain is definitely struggling with this whole inventory management thing. It's turning incredibly chaotic here. But I am happy with getting the first corner pillar in and it's looking so good. Oh, I'm really happy I textured it this way originally and it's a... Uh, a lot of blocks but it is looking really cool here and yes that is glass going up every single corner just to create the shadow just being a little bit thicker but it's time to repeat that another three times around the rest of the keep The two outside sections in the middle are now in place as well, and things are looking good for the base of our tower coming in. I've saved a ton of materials over just not carving down the mountain on the back here, and I missed a block right in there. Let's just uh, do one of those. Oh, I missed that too. Yeah, we'll do one of those there too. Speaking of which, up on top here, I really love the idea of using these sections as archways, ways that we can fly inside, as I think it's just going to be really cool. And so to more easily mark that, I've wanted to bring in our honeycomb right like this. Then along the inside, we're going to just give a border and send this all the way across here. To dole the honey blocks down just a touch, we are going to be introducing some of our orange stained glass right in front of it all. And this right here should do it and be looking pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Now we can just mirror these arches going in. I love the honey from the outside, but on the inside here, it's a little much. So I'm just going to hide it underneath. And there's one of our ways to fly in and out as we need to collect more rockets. A few more archways built up behind a really signify this entry point here and i am liking the look of it a lot now to fly over to the other side and do it again before i go up any further i want to finish off these base areas first with the back wall where i want some big windows to bring in the natural light as well as this big old copper archway that thinking about it i want to bring that right here a little bit taller even for our front entry point. Being the main grand entrance to the keep, I want this to really show it. So I've decided not only to add in the large copper archways and a small entry hall in here, but I also am including a massive hammer made out of granite and terracotta to stand out and mark the dwarven keep. And yes, right on the center there is the block of netherite. This is looking so absolutely awesome here. And I've been working on our corner towers, bringing them up a little bit further. And one of my rules for this area here is that I don't want to use torches and I don't really want to use lanterns. So we're trying to use 
fire as one of the main light sources and i feel like that needs to really be sitting here on the keep itself so on the corners i want to add in these big braziers that are just roaring away and adding a little bit of light up onto the structure and honestly just some interest with the fire crackling around we've got our lights down below off of the fake windows which are looking pretty good and ignoring the torch spam that's keeping underneath safe that is going to be really cool as we actually have a building for the glow to reflect off of like we have them here at the front entrance underneath the hammer i really love that glow just going up the side with the little smoke particles with it too ah it's so good i'm at the point of this where i have four faces and a final layer left to go on top and each side is pretty much the exact same so once i've filled in one of them that i'm going to complete i just move around to doing it on all four sides and i'm continuing my way throughout the rest of the build where this here is a very tall tower that requires two rockets to even make it out the top of it oh we've still gotta even finish this which comes together with our lodestones on each end some windows to a point up to the top and a simple roof on it for now as a final step i'm lighting a few more fires on all of the different corners to add that extra layer of detail and well to be honest to spawn proof these lower sections but with that the entire exterior of the keep is now finished oh look at that thing i managed to nearly break an elytra just from flying up and down while working on this thing and the crazy part since my material list included those corners coming all the way down like we have over here i have so many extra materials after this which thankfully we're going to be putting to good use but we did empty eight entire shulker boxes worth of stuff in order to make this with the keep done for the exterior it's time to move on to nope 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 i need to be able to fly out of here that would be much better can't exactly walk out yet Ooh, barely missed that but we've got something else very important to do today it's time to plant a field headed northwest towards the dog brewery and our new farming region i want to try something new today i'm planting a big old field still but this time we're alternating rows of carrots and potatoes just kind of for funsies just like it could be fun for you to click the like button and see the rewarding effect youtube has added and also there's a new fun celebration when you subscribe try it out for yourself uh yeah 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 but for real uh, here's a new field of carrots and potatoes i need to be really careful along these roads to not lock myself off from building in the spaces back here so we're gonna need some smaller pathways coming around the fields to access all of that but for now i really like how this has turned out and i did have to jump into this house to sleep through one of the nights and i realized i have shulker boxes of stuff sitting in here i have even more stuff i thought the theme of today was getting rid of stuff that i had in boxes all around but i guess not we can just add that to the other boxes of stuff right over here yeah uh-huh up next we can get into what's actually going inside of the keep our rocket factory as i really need some more of these partially because i still don't have another portal over there so i'm using three or four to fly back every single time but this is fine we'll fix that problem soon ignore the second dying elytra for our platforms i'm thinking we just go cheap on this one and just use some stone so we can steal a shulker from down here and now i'm gonna need so many stacks of trap doors that i think this will be enough i'm hoping that's not even close okay but that should hopefully be enough last up for the creeper farm part i need a good amount of tinted glass and i think i probably need another stack or two on top of that and i don't have too many shards in here per shard how much do i get not not much at all okay we need to go get some down into the villager trading cave we do have our landed perfectly amethyst geodes over here where we can just use a fortune pickaxe fall to the ground as intended definitely intended to grab these ones instead we can get a bunch of shards and we can make hopefully all of the tinted glass <laughs> no i need so much more oh right there's a ton of this stuff that's a lot of the basics ready to go now i need to get some of the more technical items that will be able to be used to make this actually functional like i need a ton of hoppers to pick things up pistons to push things around observers to tell the pistons to push things around and then a few wither roses that we can use to kill all of the creepers one funnel item for a little bit more spawn proofing i want to come on down here slam my face into the ground very intended and important let's grab some gray wool here so that we can create a ton of carpets that is still the only sheep that has actually used all of the shears in there everybody else is still going some haven't even filled it there has to be is there a chunk border 
There is. Wait, no, they'd all be in the same chunk. How are you eating that much more grass? Just one hungry fella. All the materials are now dropped off here, ready to go to build the thing in the sky. But before we get into that, the inside of this is a bit of a death trap. I've got a few torches here that hopefully this doesn't become a death trap. Yeah, totally fine, totally fine, completely fine. But I'm just gonna throw a few torches back here to help keep me a little bit safer. I don't want any creepers blowing up my creeper farm while I'm building the creeper farm. They're supposed to be dying inside the farm, not exploding up around the outside of it. It's very different. Looks like the only other current spawnable space is right over here as a big flat platform. So that nothing can spawn in there. Maybe a spider, but I don't think so. So we should be all good. I'm realizing now I did forget one more thing. Pretty essential to a creeper farm. Uh, cats. We need these to kind of scare the creepers. Not that it really seems to work. As you can see, Oliver here earlier today didn't seem to be getting rid of the creeper at my front door. All the way to the far side of the city at Lake Town, we should have some fish in here, maybe. Ah, fish and a lot of cats. Where I'm gonna need, I think, five cats. One for each layer that I'm doing. Everybody sit back down. Everybody, nope. Yeah, I think got in the house where you know why are you running away why are you going no just sit sit down there okay all right i think i've got my five cats okay right let's go and hope that they can follow us first stop all cats are represented and we move on here we should have five kitty cats yes okay no sit down everybody sit before you get yourselves hurt there is fire around here where'd that one go Where'd it go? Oh, it's up there. Okay. Oh, I thought I went into the fire. Okay, five kitty cats. Yep, that's great. We're all just gonna grow up down there and then we'll put you up into the farm when I need you. My plan here is to build up one of the classic creeper farms inspired by the old logical geek boy design that I've used so many times in the past. And we're gonna port the gunpowder off to one side to move it down into a basement later for crafting as we kill the creepers on soul sand with our wither roses. First layer is now done, and I believe even with a baby cat, we can get them at least up to the tippity top. where hopefully, please don't fall into the roses. Okay, and sit, and sit before a problem happens, and that should pick up the kitty. Nope, 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 we'll try this again, and this should pick up the kitty. No, 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 why aren't we picking up the cat? Okay, maybe we need more rails and more speed to pick up the kitty. No, no, why aren't you picking up the cat? Ah, there we go. Now the kitty is all picked up. And he's got to sit in there so he never teleports out back to me. And then we surround him and he's sitting on a rail so he's a little bit taller. Now to turn this into a creeper only farm before we open up all of these trap doors. We've got our carpets down to stop the spiders from spawning. And now we just need to layer this so it's slightly under two blocks to stop zombies and skeletons from spawning. Give the creeper somewhere to walk to along the outside so that they won't actually move out of here. And that right there is a working layer of a creeper farm. Just got to do this four more times. Oh, you're not supposed to be there. I guess I can take that as a thank you for reminding me that I need to light those up. The other aspect for rockets is paper. And we do have a little bit more space up here that I want to try and fill with a sugarcane farm. Over on this side, I believe we have the drop shoot for where the gunpowder is going to go down. Got to finish chucking that up. But I think I want to try and even that out on this side for our sugarcane to have them going down like columns in the throne room itself. We're going to end up with three modules that are going to run along here. And as usual, we can throw the mud on top. Now, I built many sugarcane farms inside this world, but this one is special that it's going to automatically turn them into paper and go into the rockets and everything that we could ever need in there. So with that, I just got to move forward of getting all the different stages in the water, the sugarcane and the pistons and the observers and all of that stuff. I finished hooking up our dropper system over there for the gunpowder. So I've got to extend a glass tube up here for now. And I measured them out to make sure that they are in the same spot, which is good. And as long as we can have it dropping down somewhere into a basement and connect it together, it should be pretty easy to make an auto crafter. By pretty easy to make an auto crafter, I mean I'm going to be going to YouTube and looking up a tutorial. I am missing an observer here, and that is definitely loaded with sugarcane. So I guess let's just verify that it works. And it does. And the sugarcane has just fallen all the way down. Oh, so am I. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, Elytra, I forgot to put that back on. Okay, so Shurikane will end up right about there. And then the gunpowder hasn't gotten any out of it yet. So that's okay. I think the Shurikane farm is going to be a lot faster. But it's good because we need... No, you don't need more. You need one and one. Ooh.
that's a lot of sugar cane all three modules are complete and fully lit up here so nothing should be spawning inside and it's uh it's very very bright up top compared to how dark it is as soon as you get down here for all of the creepers oh that's funny i guess if i mob proof a lot of the surrounding area the creeper farm should be a lot better but for now we can focus on actually getting these things into some form of an auto crafter dropper columns are down to the ground now and yes the creeper farm is working oh we've got at least two gunpowder in there but next i need to link them together and if we think the floor is going to be here at its lowest point just to be safe though i want to dig this down probably three blocks into the ground and do like a basement level i found a tutorial for an auto crafter designed by rex stone that i'm going to be following here for a very very tiny system that perfectly auto crafts our rockets for us This thing is incredibly tiny, but for now we can come right back over here. And I think we're gonna need some extra hoppers just for the length of our water stream. Put the water in right there and how far do we make it? Okay, yeah, I got, I got space for two more hoppers. I got them on hand anyways. And hopefully if I did my math right, that also is going to need two more hoppers. Otherwise that's gonna be kind of awkward. Yes, yes it did. <laughs> that should work as a little bit of a buffer for us here too while everything's coming in. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna need those blocks for the floor up above. It's probably gonna be a raised platform anyways, so we can just do that here. This right here is the fully functional firework farm. We have gunpowder in there ready to go. And we have paper over here just waiting for that thing to fill up. It just needs to run for a while and get at least a stack on both ends and then it'll start actually crafting things, which I guess it's just gonna spit out of there and we can put it for now into a barrel that will run into a double chest yeah that's it that's a good amount of rocket storage yeah for the whole farmer yep mm -hmm. that's definitely not underselling how much it produces hopefully before i get to designing the interior here i want to make sure that thing's actually going to be able to run so for that let's grab ourselves a few blocks of coal craft those down into coal itself and we can get a few oak logs i don't do this often enough but i should probably spawn proof the surrounding area at least a little bit i'm not gonna do the overworld because i don't really care enough to do that but everything with 128 blocks of this space in here like you know these giant dark spooky caves down here will definitely be spawning mobs that will be taking away from the rates of the creeper farm so if we could run through here someone safely please it's fine totally fine totally easily super fine i should have brought my bow where did i leave my bow i'll be back why did i put it in here it is almost broken though so that's kind of an issue i'm back ha, they can't do anything now well, anyway, super safe fun times down here. I need to light up some games. Down to the last few torches here. I don't feel like this is going to help all that much as I feel like I haven't really covered that much area, but maybe, hopefully, I've actually been underneath the place the whole time. I don't really know. I've kind of lost direction a few times. Definitely hoping that this will work to actually spawn proof a decent chunk to make the farm get, like, just a trickle. I don't I don't need all that much. Just, like, a fairly consistent trickle of gunpowder coming in. That, that'd be totally fine. Ooh, very, very stupid deep down here okay i guess we're going down oh we're going down down very very down i haven't seen this at all before definitely four torches can light up this entire space that's ow why are we doing that why why are we doing that yeah look at you you look so dumb right now we're just gonna say that this is definitely way too low underground i mean look we're all the way down at like 69 right now there's definitely no way us up there 40 blocks above is really gonna be spawning anything no definitely not how do I get out of here? I want to leave. Right, I managed to get 16 gunpowder while down there actually killing things. And how much gunpowder did we get here? Any rockets? No rockets. Right, we're still waiting on sugarcane to come in. And we ended up with that's... Yeah. Okay, so we got 13. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, it's going so well. <gasps> it's making paper. Oh, look at that. And then we're getting that in there for rockets. And we just need to get a little bit more of a backlog. There has to be at least some gunpowder in this one so that that'll never run out and that'll start producing. Haha, <laughs> look at that, it's going. Mostly because I have to go prep dinner IRL right now. Uh, let's pillar ourselves up here and create a nice little safety box for myself so that I can just AFK for a few and hopefully this thing actually will be functional. And yes, you have to fill in the corner. Otherwise, phantoms can get you, just so you know. Steaks are prepped and ready to go on the grill after we finish this up. And I seem to have found a friend. Uh, well, uh, a few, a few friends here. Um, how did you... 
Okay, well, I guess we won't know the answer to that one. Well, if anything, by how many creepers seem to be spawning up on top here, that should be a good sign for the farm on the inside. And I do have a little glow lichen that we can just kind of hide around the edge here and that should make this top section spawn proof and you won't really be able to tell it's here. Now, have we made any rockets? That is the real question. I know we've got gunpowder, but have we made? We have! Oh, it works. That means we have sugar cane coming in. We've got, oh, a ton of gunpowder. Oh, 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 that's a successful rocket factory right there. 20 minutes or two stacks of rockets. Let's go. Oh, that's fantastic. And this will start growing a lot faster here soon too, I'm sure. As soon as it just keeps working at it, ah, it's gonna be so good. I moved everything out here into our front entry hallway in order to prep for the interior, but I'll be honest, I'm not quite too sure what I wanna do with it yet. So let's finish up the plaza for now to keep moving forward. I know I'm gonna want my smooth stone. I want the andesite, a lot of stone, low lichen, and our dead corals for sure. I don't want to lead directly into buildings right here, so we're going to make this into a grand plaza entry point of sort with kind of a plus shape for a road with a big old fountain here in the middle. I think we can just bend our way along here and then send this down a good distance. Fill in our andesite right behind that, and then we're just gonna fill in the rest with some stone for now that I'll be probably coming back to texture later. Adding some polished up slabs behind that, I then wanna bring in our moss to create a small planner space. And that's looking pretty good. Now just the duplicated to the far side. Repeated those two curves over here to the far side to create where our actual road space is going to be, but we have these plant potters that I want to bring in some of our, what are these? Acacia leaves. And we can create a bit of a shape like that. And on the outside for some fun colors, I thought we could go with our blue orchids and our warped roots here and just kind of alternate them going along, which looks pretty good here. And then just to fill in some greenery on the inside, I want to take ferns grass right next to that and then alternate but for all of our ferns i want to actually bone meal these and turn them into the double tall fern and i think that looks pretty good can i make the jump i can all right time to repeat this moving into the main central road itself after both these two are set up here we'll get those guys on the end set up momentarily but for now i want to bring in a lot of our dead coral here just to get that difference in the gray tone and then also to kind of help merge things we can add a little bit of our cobble in too now, as we work our way here into the middle, I do want to work towards creating a central water, like fountain, something or another, that we're gonna do a base with these because the water's gonna dip down and then we'll top it off with the slab so nobody just goes falling right into it. I think this is about the max size that I can go for this point. And I was thinking on the inside to make it a little bit darker to give the illusion that the pool's a little bit deeper, we can add in our cobbled deep slate down here. And then to help a little bit with, actually, I'm gonna do that after I get water in because we can waterlog those. And I think it's going to be easier to fill it all in this way first. But anyways, to add a little ambient light down here, we can add in some glow lichen going around the edge, which should hopefully help spawn proof at least a little bit of the road. Honestly, I should probably add some in along the plant potters too. Not going to be perfect, but it's at least a start. Now we can just go back to finishing out these roadways. A little bit more time done and both sides of the road are now finished up. We can get a bucket of water fresh out of the fountain and we have these side sections built out here too, which I'm pretty happy about. Just copied the same idea from those front planters and brought them around here with the double tall ferns, which I really need to make a farm for those. And our little flowers here in the front with a little bit of glow lichen across that. So hopefully the inside of our gardens are spawn proof and we don't have to deal with any creepers blowing up our ferns. Oh, I'm in the pond. That right there is looking really good good it just probably needs that whole interior thing and i need to go get a bunch of blocks to be able to build the thing after i figure out what the thing is going to be first that's that's definitely the hard part here okay i finally got an idea it's been like three hours since the last clip but i need a lot of blocks to pull this off so we're back to a new step one so off we go left a few sugar boxes at the front porch there and we can head on down into stone storage to pick up a few more things i rifled through everything that i had up there already and managed to pull out a good amount of stuff but with the outside i also want the inside to be pretty heavily tough base i think we need a lot more of this stuff too 
As in, like, we're gonna need a lot of different tough materials for the inside of this one. By that, I mean I need to go mining for more tough blocks because I exhausted all the extra tough I'd gathered earlier. Oh, boy. Before we go down on the quest for even more tough, I thought we could come over here as I want to pick up a few warped trapdoors and slabs and honestly some buttons. Inspired by something I made way back in the day on FR Season 2, I had these custom trees that were kind of giant mushrooms for the Cave of Goblin. And I thought we could do a little bit of that influence for the inside here and maybe add some of those trees around. So I'm thinking on top of that, we can get some birch fences too. Probably a few more than that. Probably more like that. One extra stop is down here into, nope, not the chimney, into the herbalist. We're hidden back over here. I completely forgot this thing exists, but I have the glow like farm, which is so insanely loud. And I need just about a stack and that should do. I want to have a lot of the light drawing people to certain points within the keep as it's a very large space. So we're going to use darkness to make it feel a little bit smaller. But unfortunately, now down. Ooh, how did you get over here? You're not supposed to be there. Back to the door. Keep it guarded safe. Don't let the creepers in. I mean, these cats are trying to get me killed. That's the second time today one's been out of position or not doing their job. Just got to the bottom of the mines. And yes, I just realized this is up here. Oh, we don't have haste to mine it, but at least I am guaranteed tough here i'm definitely not addicted to using this block for in every build i make i swear it's definitely not oh diamonds look at that oh it's been so worth using it oh i love that three diamonds yes oh it's a good day i seem to enter at the middle of a massive vein here and i think that right there is going to be enough tough at least to get me through right now next up though i do need a lot more cobbled deep slate so we move to the next part of the mines you finished mining out this chunk of space I got a few friends to help me out. Oh boy. A little while later, a little bit more crafting done. We've got five shulker boxes loaded worth of stuff to fill in the interior. I want to create a large throne room where we can utilize the low light level to attract our eyes to the middle throne itself while having some quieter side routes to access storage underneath. I'm trying to copy the large archways and work in that upper flying entrances as well to create a form of a council room with chairs in the middle and those custom tree things on the outside all forming around our raised throne place platform we're ignoring the shulker mess right out front this is looking pretty cool in here we have four different chairs for our council members to sit in and then right up here we have the throne itself which is looking pretty cool i really really am happy with how the walls turned out i tried we're going with something lighter at the bottom here so we have our wool with glow like in front of it and then we have the powder and then that just goes into tough which is just consistent all the way up to the top i may texture it later but for now with the different light that we have in here and it getting darker i feel like it's got enough going on with it i mean heck you could barely see the cobbled deep slide i put up at the top there for our item shoots here i just added a little bit of reinforcement around the outside because i thought it was cool to see the ah the sugar cane falling right there almost as if i planned it do we see gunpowder too huh 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 I'm going to take that as a no. But we got our cool little mushroom leafy tree something or another's over here. Kind of fantastical. And I think they're pretty sweet. And that is purely mirrored over to this other side with uh, it's looking really good. The only thing that is kind of weird right now is up here at the top get a little bit of light bleeding through there which i could fix and then this right now is just a platform here that i put these lights on to help spawn proof the area and then you do just kind of need to fly all the way down here there's actually no way to access the storage room so i wanted to dig this down a little bit more probably stepping down four blocks and then we'll come around to this side where the middle should be right here hopefully if i lined it all up correctly otherwise this is going to be awkward and it works right here into the middle where we we haven't produced a single extra rocket since then. How did we make sugar? Now we're making rockets. All right, here we go. Storage is fully filled up. All of the rockets have moved down here and we've got a ton of them in place, which is looking really good. And I believe the system, we've got a little bit of sugar cane left over in there. We don't have any gunpowder left, but we've got this in here locked in and that. So it shouldn't be able to break anymore because it'll only craft again once we get some more gunpowder. Seeing as this hopper's empty, that comparator isn't reading anything. So the system can't be running. We need both of them to have items in it, which probably prevents that weird thing 
thing where we had the sugar or two stacks of gunpowder appearing in there which means hopefully i should never run out of rockets as we're working on the city out here building up this entire place these should hopefully both be producing pretty consistently meaning i hopefully never have to craft firework rockets ever again that's a lot of hopefullys but you know at least we're looking on the bright side of this really cool keep is now in place and it's got a purpose there we have it a fully functional rocket factory hidden inside of the dwarven keep where i am really happy to be fully caught up on my current plans for the dwarven city zone that we have out here if you have any more ideas on what we can fill this entire valley with please be sure to jot them down in the comments below click the like button while you're there and subscribe if you're new and i'll catch y'all on the flip side <gasps> radish i can't leave you here you're coming with me